Yeah, I guess a response video to Antakantavad. This was watching Rena Webb's video. Very nice, very good. I'll post a link below to that. Um, so anyway, I'll play Antakantavad's response video. But the the important thing I guess I'm going to um, focus on is this idea. Uh, okay, the issue explored here is guilt, and in my opinion, the cure for an unhealthy degree of guilt. Okay. Yeah. The cure for an unhealthy degree of guilt is not glorification, but a certain degree of acceptance. So, we're really talking, so he's saying, if you think about the banana peel on the sidewalk, my previous video, um, if you think about the potential negative consequences of procreating, that's an unhealthy degree of guilt. I mean, he used this as an example. So that's being that's an unhealthy thing to do. It's an un it's even it's bad for you to do that, to measure consequences, to measure risk. Because desire is good and it, by nihilist philosophy, suffering is irrelevant. It doesn't even exist, really. <laughs> That's what it's going to come down to. I mean, we're just back, back to what, uh, arguing um, Nietzschean philosophy, which is just go with the DNA molecules mission statement. The desire is appropriate, the ambition is appropriate, the need is appropriate, and any price paid for it, and any concern about a price paid for it, is not relevant. We are here to build monsters. We're not here to do anything else. Just be a Tyrannosaurus. Be the lizard. That's all. That's all he's saying. It's just that <coughs> there's, there's nothing else here. So I'm just going to keep asking him to provide me evidence. Show me the unhealthy guilt in the world. Show me its existence in the world. Show me the consequence of the unhealthy guilt. Show me the horrid implications of the unhealthy guilt. And I'm not talking about the the person who, like, say, kills somebody while drunk driver and then just becomes more preposterously drunk or something because they can't get over the fact that they committed this crime or this accident. I'm not talking about <clears throat> people who wallow in guilt. I'm just talking about the thing that you're calling guilt, which is any recognition of implications that are negative. You obviously don't think people should consider <laughs> um, how silly their ambitions are. You just think they should be concentrating on avoiding any consideration of a negative consequence. Loud and clear. So just show me. Show me examples in the world of guilt. The uh, menace of Rina guilt. Webb, thank you for your response. Um, you said you were going to make one, so I went looking for it. Good video. A um, couple of issues, though. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to be implying that um, if we do not base our ethical decisions upon guilt, then ethical decisions will not be made. Well, I do. That's not what she was saying. Not at all. She's just saying that when you're rational, your rationality requires you to evenly. You're saying every every perception should be bigoted towards some positive desire and there should be no perception of negative impact because negative obviously every time you consider negative impact it will cause a negative emotion just as thinking about chocolate ice cream you know something I haven't had in 15 years chocolate ice cream yeah you know like, I, yeah oh, oh yeah I'm, I'm feeling it I'm feeling it and if I think about cow with an electric thing on its udder and it gets electrocuted through its udder it gets nipple shocked you know or something like that yeah that's automatically negative yes it's automatically going to be sympathetic empathetic um, it's going to be unfun to do that and it's going to be fun to think about ice cream so yeah it's always going to turn out that way that's right we have logically associated categories 
see we have a category called suffering we suffer like you know whatever happens to you you get some kind of like whatever severe anal warts and you suffer horribly so now you know what severe anal warts is and I'm sure you've had them right you're the kind of guy um, that's it causes that vision problem um, anyway so so yeah you have to say okay I know what that I know what a negative is now and then you associate other things like getting nipple shock you, should, you kind of tie that to that category so you just tie things to this category of yes that's somewhat like anal warts and so things get tied to categories of, of things that cause you distress cause you you know even just thinking about it goes ooh, you shudder a little bit because you're like ooh, that was really bad and so you understand the concept of bad you associate other things that have the look of bad all over them with that category of bad and then when you consider things that have elements of things like anal warts in them you're automatically going to have an emotive reaction because that's how you establish value is through these emotions and again all you're saying is good feelings good bad feelings bad don't feel bad about anything okay it's not your fault we didn't do it it's not you know just go with the flow be a Borgite I mean you're just so Borg all over the place I mean you know, don't consider any equations, you know, where you have to worry yourself about some negative consequence because it's just about chasing. It's not about anything that's going to disengage you from your passion to chase. You're just a greyhound. Chase the rabbit. Don't think about anything else. I mean, it is, it is, it's, it's, what? It's just the philosophy of a lizard. It's silly disagree with that. Um, it seems to, you seem to say that, say, if we didn't feel guilty about things like, uh, you mentioned, slavery and rape, um, then there's a good chance that such things would never have been seen to be um, unacceptable. There's no way you could understand them as wrong without feeling bad about them. You can't understand the wrongness. You can't associate them with bad categories. You can't associate them with your own pain without recognizing, without feeling it again, without feeling a taste of it. There's no possible way you can consider something that is bad or wrong without having a sensation. It's impossible. You can't know the word wrong. The only way you can do that is you have to have frontal lobe damage. I mean, I'm a speculating, but I think you have something right here. You have a big, you have a brain wart. You have something right here in your frontal lobe that's disassociating you from the inevitable, unavoidable um, um, reality that thoughts are connected to feelings, especially thoughts about value. You cannot separate them without having a wart in your brain. <laughs> um, well, I don't think that guilt had as much to do with the abolition of slavery as a lot of people seem to think. Now, I don't think it had anything to do with guilt. It had to do with the recognition that slavery is like anal warts. And, uh, yeah, I don't like anal warts. Why should I think they like anal warts? Of course they don't like being slaves. Holy shit, duh. That's what it had something about, okay, is that they no longer could believe the lies, okay? They lied to each other. Oh, they're just fucking uh, animals, okay? They're like donkeys, okay? No problem. And people told them that, and then they realized that they had conversations with the slaves. And they realized the slaves came to the rescue and saved them from suffering. The slave was there when they were sick, and, and all the kinds of shit like that. And they realized these are fucking human beings, and they have good days, and they have bad days, and they have miseries, and they have all kinds of things just like I fucking do. And they recognized that, okay, the lie doesn't work anymore. They're not fucking mules. They're not stupid. They can, they can learn to read. They can do all the stuff we can do if you just let them go to school, too, like everybody else. They can, they can drink tea with their pinky out, too. They can do all of that shit. And it was just a lie. They kept them stupid and ignorant so they could pretend they were animals. That was part of the fucking goddamn propaganda. It's like Nazis gluing horns on Jews. Come on. It's not that fucking complicated. It's called propaganda. And all of a sudden, the propaganda... Just war too fucking thin. 
and I don't think I'm going to skip guilt. I'm going to skip this. Uh, well, I'll let him do this part, but when he gets in that history part, his history is just crap. So I'm going to skip that part because it's just bullshit. Is the biggest um, reason why people do not commit rape. <laughs> Uh, and I would say that actually, if we're going to rely on these things, okay. So his argument is is that he wants to make love, and he wants the woman to go all gooey on him and say, "Ooh, ooh, you're just too much for me, anaconda bad man. Ooh, I never had a man like you," and sing him a little song and such. And um, you know, but but that's not the argument, is it? Antikondavad. It's not about what you want. We know there's plenty of men who just want a piece of ass, okay? They will fuck women who are unconscious. Okay, quite obviously, they have no real interest in her going, ooh, ah, ah. Okay, they just have an interest in humping something, okay, with a semi-slimy vagina. And that's it. Alright, so let's pretend some more, right? Just keep pretending you're talking about reality when you say we and this and all this other bullshit and has something. No, the fact is laws prevent people from committing crimes. Deterrence works. They calculate the risk, right? They think about the consequences and they say, gee, maybe I'll get a six-pack instead. That's the fact, asshole. Okay, you want to keep lying to people, go ahead and keep lying to people. But the fact is that the law works, and there's lots of people who want to break laws. But they don't, because they know they don't want to go to fucking prison. I mean, I, mean, I, don't, want to, I don't want to just keep telling you silly things, but I'm honestly, quite honestly, okay? Without laws against whacking people, <laughs> yeah, I'd be a cleaner tomorrow, for free. I'd clean really cheap anyway. Let's just say my price would be really fucking low. To, uh, on guilt, to keep us, shall we say, safe from things like um, rape and slavery, we're in trouble. Well, obviously, you know, again, do you really think that the people who are going to commit the crime are even capable of feeling guilt? It's not, you can't impose guilt on somebody who's impervious to it, jackass. So what sense does your argument make? The only people that can feel guilt are people that can understand the wrongness. Right? Is that not correct? And you think, though, that everybody, you, everything you feel is somehow correct. I would argue that everything you feel isn't correct. Okay, that every one of your hungers isn't uh, consistent with um, the best interest of all involved. And you goddamn know it. And you moderate your behavior based on that fact, that it will have a consequence. I mean, I'm sure you don't just sit there and fart, you know, in the middle of the room. You don't sit there at the theater and say, oh, I gotta, I gotta unload some gas. You mind if I just sit, stand up here and fart in your face? I'm sure there's some sort of sense of obligation to the other patrons not to be a complete disgusting asshole. So what, is that excessive guilt? You should just be who you are? A pig? You know most people are pigs, you do know that, don't you? Well, whatever, I don't, there's no point in arguing this. Yeah, he's fucking got a wart in his fucking frontal lobe. Why am I bothering arguing with somebody with a wart in their frontal They're lobe? They're not going to do the job. Uh, good example, say, of slavery. Um, slavery was not abolished due to guilt. Um, there are any number of reasons why slavery was abolished, but guilt wasn't one of them. Oh, whatever. Recognition was, and you want to call that not guilt in this case is just silly, so I think you just got huge double standards. So we're going to jump ahead. This, this he goes through the Romans and the this and the that, and it's all a pile of shit. The, the fact that they're shackled and chained and brutalized and everything like that, it's just I would actually feel better if they weren't. It's not that I would be... Um, I'd feel better simply because I would remove my guilty conscience. It's, I would get a positive benefit of a world full of happy people to buttress my own happiness, my own sense of well-being. So he's, he's saying that we should have these affirmative um, um, desires, uh, you know, that we should just try to uh, make it into a carrot. Like, we don't, we're not against slavery. Slavery is bad, or because we understand it to be bad. We're just for elevating people to better conditions or something like that. So I, I shouldn't want the... So, so say the rich are too rich. 
I shouldn't say that uh, we should do something to make the rich less rich. I should say, oh yeah, let's do the float all boats bullshit. <laughs> yeah, right? I should use some kind of voodoo economics instead of dealing with the hard equation, the hard obligation to do something that's not going to be pleasant. So in his opinion, all work that needs to be done in the world is positive work. Right? You can all whistle while you work kind of thing. There's no bad jobs. And, um, you know, there's, it, it's just totally unrealistic. The sometimes the only way something can get done is because you have to be really irritated. You have to be really pissed off. It has to be a real thorn in your side before you bend over to pull it out. Okay? So, so this idea of you, uh, and especially by our nature, we are not giving by nature. So let's not let's not ignore every primate study ever done in the history of mankind and pretend that we're somehow benevolent by nature because we're not. We're bigoted and we're selfish by nature and so you're not going to be able to manufacture carrots to make us good or for us to do good. You're going to have to sometimes create the the inverse carrot, where you're going to have to have the carrot of honor and decency, which are going to provoke you uh, some sense of obligation to be better than you are, okay, <laughs> in that sense, uh, to, to satisfy a condition. And it's only going to be your recognition that you're not satisfying the condition that's going to provoke you to do better. So it's intrinsically negative, fundamentally negative. All right, it moves you in a positive direction, but the only way it can make you do that is it has to create a thorn in your side. It has to create an impediment to your sense of of value. And so as long as you're telling people, feel good about who you are and what you are now, they're not going to do anything to be better. And it's just, you're just lying to yourself thinking that dream about double birthday cake is going to make them do the work that needs to get done, because it's not. They have to be thinking about no birthday cake. <laughs> you know, and it's just a fact of our psychology. And again, demonstrate to me, show me the horrors of guilt in the world. Show me examples of the horror of excessive guilt in the world. How it has ruined human relationship and human um, hospitality and human decency. Show me examples of how humans have gone wrong by being guilty by feeling guilt. Show me examples of that. Um, if you read Uncle Tom's Cabin, the, the novel that apparently ignited the Civil War, the American Civil War, and that's kind of the thinking behind all of that, too. It, there's a lot of guilt in that novel, but there's also a lot of love. Um, people don't seem to think that a desire for something good is as potent a motivation as a fear of something bad. But I yeah, I think it's just fact, okay? I mean, you can do it with rats, you can do it with any mammal you choose, put them in the maze, and uh, offer the two options of the punishment or the reward, and you'll find out the punishment is about nine times more effective. I think that it is. I think that we just don't recognize it, but that doesn't alter the fact that the desire to improve is just as powerful a motivating force as the desire to escape. Well, again, the desire to improve when you already are very self-satisfied will accomplish nothing. And so you're just lying, okay? Somebody isn't going to win the Olympics unless they need it. They need it hard. They have to make the fact that they're not the winner a thorn in their side. They have to beat themselves up with the idea that they're a loser until they become a winner. And if you think something else is happening, you're lying to yourself and you're lying to your audience. Because there isn't something else happening. You cannot be self-satisfied, self-comfortable, and think that you're going to get motivated to get off the couch and do a damn thing. Because you're not. Punishment. Um... We're going to talk about rape, I suppose. Uh, I didn't bring it up, but a lot of people bring that one into it as sort of the ultimate evil thing that you can do, and I don't dispute that. Well, I certainly wouldn't dispute it. I mean, there's lots of lots of tortures in the world that are a lot worse than rape, but 
Yes, it's a perfectly good example of somebody taking, that's all. It just has the obvious take to it thing. You know, I will take for my comfort, for my gratification at somebody else's expense. It has that written all over it. Um, but I'll put it this way. If it was simply guilt that prevented us from raping other people... It's not simply guilt. Again, it's just silly to call it guilt. An acknowledgement that it will be harmful is not guilt. I mean, it just isn't. It would be, again, it isn't guilt that stops me from, what, advocating that people have uh, uh, missile launchers, that we make missile, missile launchers uh, legal. All right, there's no sense of guilt or a sense of anything. There's just a fucking logical understanding that, oh, nothing good will come of that. That'll go all wrong for sure. So, yeah, I know it to be fucking fundamentally, preposterously stupid. Yeah, and so what's, what's so complicated? I mean, what? I had to accept that the woman is a sentient being of equal respectability to my own sentience and that I can't take from her. Oh, gee, guilt-mongering. No, logic-doing. I mean, you know, you keep, you keep confusing, you know, guilt-mongering with logic-doing. There, you know, it's just, it's just, you really have to make a distinction between these two things. And that sometimes logic-doing will impose guilt on you in hindsight, but never in foresight. Well, not never, okay? I mean, yes, you might feel pre-guilty until you correct a circumstance. So like the banana peel, right? I'm not guilty because nothing's happened. No one slipped on it yet. So I'm kind of feeling pre-guilt in saying, okay, I'm imagining them slipping on it, so I'll go back and pick it up because that's the right thing to do. All right, is that an example? Cleaning up your mess? Is that an example of um, unhealthy guilt? Or a fear of punishment? I believe that there would be a lot more rape. <laughs> well, you believe a lot of preposterously silly shit. And that's all it is. It's preposterously silly. And the fact that people just don't... What the fuck are you talking about, shit for brains? I mean, the fact that they are not as puzzled and perplexed by the fact that you can get away with saying this shit, where eight people will say, yes, that makes sense, and only one person will say, no, that is the biggest pile of crap I ever fucking heard, is quite amazing. But it is the internet, people are insane, and yeah, I'm on planet of the fucktard, no doubt about it. Um, what's the first thing that a woman learns when she goes to bed with a man, and what she learns about him, not so much about herself, but about him. Selfish bastard. If the woman is enjoying the act of having sex, it magnifies the male's pleasure. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I find this so creepy when he starts talking about sex. <laughs> Just shrivels me right the fuck up. Um, yeah, okay, some men enjoy having sexual relationships with women that are relationships, where they're giving them ego boost, and they're saying, no, your little dick is big enough, and everything's okay, you know, and they're doing whatever they can to encourage him along, you know, it's all okay, you're doing okay, you're doing okay, because they need encouragement, and then there's other males who are just saying, the chick's hot, I'm gonna fuck her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doesn't really care whether she talks or thinks or... She's, it doesn't matter what the fuck's going on in her little fucking... What, she has a brain? I, I don't, I'm not even noticing if her eyes are open. What the fuck, fella? So again, just don't pretend that everybody wants the same thing from a relationship. Because that's kind of silly. I mean, from sex. I wouldn't even say relationships, because obviously some men can turn it on and turn it off. I mean, they have a wife, and then they have a mistress. You know, they have one woman to be sympathetic and understanding with, and all that kind of crap, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they have a woman just for fucking. Um, I'm not going to say that that's true in all cases. I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there who like to use things like handcuffs to enhance their pleasure. But by and large... When a woman is energetic, 
when she moans in pleasure, when she laughs, when she does all kinds of things to indicate that she is thrown into a euphoria of sexual rapture, that adds to the man's pleasure. That's why. <laughs> you know, really well, whatever. I don't even think. I don't think a woman can add. She can just subtract. So as long as she's not talking about what she wants to go buy at the mall tomorrow, I figure I'm winning. I mean, I, you have higher expectations than I do. As the joke goes, that's why women fake orgasms, because they think men care. Well, it, it actually is. Men actually do care. Um, and it actually does add to the male's pleasure. So, she um, so if you want to have sex, if that's your motivation for sex is to get pleasure, um, most people, or at least a critical mass of people, think that a woman squealing and moaning in pleasure beneath them is a lot more of a turn-on than a woman. Yeah, whatever. Liars. Yeah, liars. <laughs> so, so again, you're talking more about lying. Lying is good. The truth sucks. Okay, yeah, that's your philosophy. I got that part, for sure. And screaming for her life. Um... Guilt doesn't factor into it. It's what I actually want when I leap into bed with a woman. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. We're talking about rapists. What do rapists want? And they want terror in the woman's eye. They want a lot of things that are really not nice. And the only thing that keeps rape within boundaries is the fact that there's lots of men out there who want to see that terror in their eyes, uh, but they're more afraid of being butt-fucked in prison. I want fun, I want pleasure, I want happiness. Um, raping her is not the sort of thing that's going to give me any pleasure. So well, again, we, we, you, know, you, you sit there and mix subjects, right? And this is your kind of your tactic. You talk about things as if they have something to do with you when they have nothing to do with you, right? So, obviously, I don't have, I'm not part of rape culture either. I have no personal interest in rape. But I can understand somebody who might have a personal interest in rape, and I can understand just as I'm deterred from, you know, doing what I enjoy, uh, you know, which might be running amok with a steamroller, um, you know, they could enjoy some other thing. And that uh, the reason why they don't do what they want to do and I don't do what I want to do is because I don't want to go to prison and they don't want to go to prison. Duh. I don't do it. <laughs> uh, it's not going to add to, to the overall uh, value of the experience. So I don't think that negative reinforcement is the reason why we avoid bad things. I think it, or at least it's not in all cases. I well, all he's, all he's basically saying here is that you must be a nepotist. Go with cuteness. I mean, just it's just kind of stupid, right? I mean, logically, you know, that's okay, I shouldn't treat the cute one different than I treat the ugly one. It's an illogical statement. It's a pain in the ass to be uh, fair. <laughs> okay, it's not fun, but you rationally can understand it. And it's not, you want to call that, again, you want to call that unhealthy guilt because I recognize that my nepotism and my prejudice is bullshit? That's unhealthy guilt? No, I don't think so. That's called, again, logic. So you're you're right. Your opposition to logic has been established, and um, you're just fooling these, you know, morons uh, into thinking that um, you're not basically just laughing at logic. I say that in enough cases, in a critical mass of cases, the desire for the good is what we seek when we do the right thing. The desire for the good is what we seek when we do the right thing. Is it, do you think that's the truth? Honestly? When you look inside of yourself, do you see yourself doing the right thing for the right reasons? Or are you doing them often because honor codes, um, you feel like an asshole if you don't, uh, you know, that you really don't want to be a good person that basically you want to have, you want to take, and that you just know that would make you an asshole. 
So, I mean, that's the truth for me. I mean, I'm just being honest, okay? I, honestly, I'm a selfish motherfucker. A preposterously selfish, self-glorifying, vain, egomaniacal motherfucker. And if you think you're something else, I'm just going to call bullshit because you're lying. Oh, I mean, really, this is a silly conversation that somehow it's in our nature to be giving and loving and caring that we're not conniving fucking weasels that we're not trying to figure out how we get two pieces of pie come on you liar I mean especially this guy I mean who believes that oh yes he's really like Jeebus or something even Jesus was a selfish cunt oh yeah you know, the oil well yeah I'm okay I'm using up the money but uh the poor will be with you always and the, and the chick's hot and she's rubbing my feet and uh, I'm the only one, I'm the only Jesus, and I'm only here for a short time, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even Jesus couldn't pull it off. And this asshole thinks everybody is. Everybody's pulling it off. Jesus couldn't pull it off, but everybody else is. Oh, us humans are kick. We're wonderful. We'll swell. We're just so naturally giving. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why we got $20 trillion in debt. Oh, you're hilarious. You're just fucking hilarious. In, the, in a really negative, obnoxious, shit, I want to blow my brains out kind of way. Just wanted to make that clear. Ah, whatever. It's a good video, thank you. Yeah, fuck you. I mean, this is so disingenuous. Good video. I didn't pay any fucking attention to it whatsoever. I'm just having a conversation about something entirely different. I just ignored your whole argument that, well, there's a difference between logic and silly emotions. Yeah, I don't pay any attention to that because, yeah, that's... I don't want to have to deal with that logic shit. Thank you. <laughs> you know... Yeah, okay, ignore the argument and just say thank you. Okay, we see that strategy works on YouTube uh, with the impotable excables. Um, but yeah, you're not going to fool me with that shit, buddy. <sighs> I'm in the no, I'm not fooled category. Speaking of fools, Fede, Fede, <laughs> he made a video, right? That's supposed to be a response to this, which in the first half of it isn't a response to it. It's a rationalization for prostitution, which is hilarious, right? I mean, theoretically, I mean, how, you know, if you think about how many women have been killed by prostitution, I mean, you know, AIDS and all the other venereal diseases, even outright just murdered by men, prostitutes. I mean, they die more than cops or coal miners or, you know, by any, any other proportion. Horrific attrition. You know, horrific. And all they're doing is bribing them to go in the mine. Well, we pay them well. Some of them. I mean, I don't want to make a whole video about prostitution again, but I mean, fuck these rationalizations. You're just exploiting desperation. Okay, and if women had real choices to make real money for doing some other kind of work of similar effort, they'd take the cho they'd take the option likely. They probably wouldn't sleep with any old fat tub of shit. Okay, they'd definitely be pretty damn um, discriminating in uh, you know what they'd allow on top of them, and you goddamn know it. So, I mean, it's just such bullshit. I mean, like I said, when you consider what most prostitution, which, which, which what most prostitution is, it is not some elitist little rich cunt saying, oh yeah, I just want to have some wild and crazy sex with disease latent creepoids. Yeah, that's not most prostitution. I hate this planet. More and more every microsecond. Just keeps like drip, 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 drip. It's like this drip, 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 drip. My whole drip, 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 drip. It just seems like the drip, 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 drip. Yeah, the drips are getting much faster lately. It's a lot of fucking drips in the fuck. I hate this place, bucket. Drip, 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 dr